everybody, happy whatever today is because consistency, yay! So I went on a trip last week and I thought it was interesting enough to talk about. If it isn't, well, you're still watching. <laughs> I get invited to a lot of interesting things and I tend to be like, oh no, I don't have time to do that, but that sounds cool, ask me again later. And then I keep saying no. And it's not even an in insult or anything. It's just the fact that I always put work first. Don't do that. I'm not saying don't be industrious and you know, achieve things, but I am saying that if somebody asks you to go to see a spaceship, go ahead and say yes while you still get the invitations. So I did. On Friday, I set out to drive to the Mojave Desert. I'd never been there before. It sounded like a place where I would play a video game and you know, mutants are gonna attack me. Not, I did not see any mutants, but I could have. But the most interesting about the trip was what happened before I got to the actual event and I wanted to talk to you about it because I like sharing. So I was driving and I realized, hey, Mojave, California doesn't have a Starbucks. So I had to stop in civilization for a couple hours before I checked into my hotel for the thing that I was going to the next day. I went to the Palmdale Mall. I'm not really recognized a lot when I go out places. The most place I was recognized was London, but I think it's just because everyone's crammed together. But generally, you know, once a week somebody will say, hey, you're that girl. Let me just tell you, I have a very big fan base in Palmdale and Lancaster mall area because I think probably 10 or 12 people at the mall at 4 p.m. on a Friday was like, whoa, which was weird, but cool. And then I realized I didn't comb my hair for a couple days or wash it, so then I was like, ooh, groom yourself, lady. But the coolest part was um, all the ladies at Hot Topic recognized me from my Charlie. Hey, that thing. And they came and, and found me while I was in a Build-A-Bear. Listen guys, there's a thing called a Build-A-Bear and I might have just crawled out of under from underneath the earth to figure this out, but I've seen them before but I never went in because I'm like, it's a children's place. Well, I had two hours to burn in a, in a random suburban California mall. Let's go into Build-A-Bear. So I saw this place and I was like, oh, there's my little pony figurine in there. Hmm, am I too old for this? Is this something that's appropriate? If I go in there by myself and not pretend I'm buying a, a, a gift for a toddler, am I gonna be a creepster? So then I sat outside of the Build-A-Bear looking in on my phone, pretending that I wasn't looking at the inventory, which was total creepster. The woman finally was kind of like, why don't you come in, lady? And I did. So for about 35 minutes, I, I wandered around the Build-A-Bear, surrounded by four-year-olds, trying to pick out their special bear. And here's the weird part. So you buy the deflated bear, and they sort of, they stick it on a machine that just shoves stuffing in them and it's very weird the way they thrust the limbs on the machine that fills the thing with life and fullness. I wanted to find the perfect Build-A-Bear for myself but every time I got close to like a oh, standard bear, oh that's too standard, my little pony, ah oh, I don't want to be branded. So I looked up there and I was like hey what's that thing and it was like a old guy cowboy, it was a human and I was like why is there a stuffed human up there? She's like uh that's Santa. I, it was out of context. I'd have never seen Santa in a cowboy outfit before. So then I was like, well, I want that guy. And she looked at me weird, like, you want the old man doll? She got me the Santa doll, and I was like, well, tear his hat off. And she did so, but again, weirded out. She shoved him on the little, you know, filling him with lifeblood, puffing, puffing, puffing in a creepy way. And then she was like, oh, uh, do you want a sound in him? And I'm like, what, you can make him speak? Well, of course they had Frozen which no, because every single child who came in there for the 45 minutes I was in there played the Frozen song. It's a great song, guys, but no, it's like that pumped up kick song. The more you play it, the more it does not get better. So I, I picked out a sound for him, and then she was like, there's his heart. And I looked over and there's a bin of hearts. Like somehow this is gonna bring this automaton to life. So I got, the, I got my guy stuffed, and then I dressed him. And guys, I just followed my whims. I just need some input. How did I do? Oh, he lost his lightsaber. I don't, I don't think this is an un unreasonable creation. He's just blinging. Watch this, this is the best part. Oh yeah. Dur, 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 dur. And then his set, oh God. Look at that. He's got a lightsaber and a sound in him. What'd you say, Santa? You're just silly. And the cool thing is, shut up. The cool thing is that it's kind of like a micro transaction game, this place. I mean, the base doll is like, I don't know, like 20 bucks. 
and then everything else costs seven dollars three dollars two dollars it adds up to a lot guys thank goodness i'm making a video and this is tax deductible maybe my accountant says no crap of course i didn't just get him one daytime outfit that would be uh foolish i got several other outfits too let me show you stop it you shut up don't giggle when i'm dressing you it's so creepy i'm dressing my own doll i'm an adult woman with no children <laughs> look at this <laughs> he's a werewolf and look what another 20 bucks <laughs> And then lastly, I had to get him uh, an everyday outfit for when he's not feeling fancy and when it's not, um, let's dress like a werewolf. So uh, the last outfit I got was this one. Ta-da! Look, it's Senior Citizen Captain America. Look at him. I mean, he's ready to save the day after he takes his osteoporosis medicine. He's got, oh, I'll save you. Ar ar oh, sciatica. I mean... In 20 years, they're gonna still be making those things. Why not pitch a, like a Sean Connery as Captain America? Chris Evans, move over, huh? <laughs> hey, hey! I'm pitching a spinoff. Codex, hey! I know it's frightening. So the real reason I went to Mojave, California was because I was invited there by Virgin Galactic uh, that coincided with the 10th anniversary of the X Prize. So 10 years ago, there was a uh, $10 million prize given out to the first civilian uh, spaceship that was able to uh, go into space and come back safely uh, twice in a week, I think. And uh, the Virgin Galactic technology is based on the plane that won and they decided, hey, let's open our hangar and show people what this Virgin Galactic thing is gonna be whenever it's ready. Basically, if you've ever flown Virgin America, it's like that in space. And that's what's cool about it. They're gonna take people and if you buy a ticket, which is like $250,000, um, you know, not accessible to most of us, but you can go and you, uh, you spend three days training and then you get in there and you go all the way into orbit. So you're up there for about 10 minutes and then you come back down vertically. And it seems like kind of the coolest thing, experience um, that you can do. I mean, you'll be an astronaut. And there's only about 550 people who've ever been in space in history. So the fact that that's going to be exponential now is is pretty cool i got to go in the hangar and see the vehicles up close there's an overplane called the white knight that has two sections to it that carries the spaceship called spaceship two underneath it so the white knight carries the spaceship up into i think uh, they said about fifty thousand feet and then they let the uh the rocket part go the spaceship two go and then the spaceship two just goes vroom and goes up they said 300,000 feet. And seeing it up close was really, uh, I grew up in Huntsville, Alabama. We were right next to the, you know, the Space and Rocket Center and, the, and where people go to space camp. And it's always been a part of my childhood to think about astronauts and, and see spaceships up close. And this was really the kind of technology that you think, hey, this is gonna be the future. One day they'll be able to take these rockets and go over, up and over to London in like an hour from LA. So, it was pretty cool. And then I was in the same room with Richard Branson and he was behind me watching our tour and I kind of was like, oh my God, it's Richard Branson. And then I got to go to a luncheon to celebrate the X Prize and just meet all these interesting people, aerospace engineers and scientists and billionaires and just people who are really invested in pushing the envelope and, and making sure that space is an important part of our world going forward. One day, regular people being able to afford to go into orbit. So thanks Virgin Galactic for inviting me to the tour. It was awesome and um, <laughs> Captain in America and I had a great time. <laughs> so I asked on Twitter if it's creepy for an adult to go into the Build-A-Bear by themselves and it was like 50-50. I think this, my hand is on his crotch. He's legal. <laughs> All right, see you guys later. Hope you're enjoying the videos. Uh, yeah.